I'll come back to the second part of this week's lecture. This week's topic is target devices and performance metrics. So we talk about target devices. Now we are moving on to performance metrics. Again, just to remind you, this, this slides and actually this week's topics are from NIST internal report 8114 titled Report on Lightweight Cryptography. In this uh, document before the standardization process, they try to analyze the target devices and performance metrics. So we are just uh, highlighting their report. So in cryptographic algorithm design, there is a trade-off between performance and resources required for a given security level. Performance can be expressed in terms such as power and energy consumption, latency, and throughput. So all of them are actually important for us, for the lightweight cryptography and also for the devices that we are going to use in the Internet of Things. The resources required for a hardware implementation are usually summarized in gate area, gate equivalents or logic blocks, and it is also known as configurable logic blocks, logic elements, adaptive logic modules or slices. In software, this is reflected in register, RAM, and ROM usage. Resource requirements are sometimes referred to as cost, as adding more gates or memory tends to increase the production cost of a device, because especially in hardware, you have limited number of gates and limited number of memory. Power and energy consumption are relevant metrics due to the nature of many constraint devices. Uh, power may be of particular importance in devices that harvest power from their surroundings, like uh, smart cards. An example would be an RFID chip that uses the electromagnetic field transmitted by a reader to power its internal circuit. Energy consumption, in other words, power consumption over a certain time period, is especially important in battery operated devices that have a fixed amount of stored energy. The batteries in some devices may be difficult or impossible to recharge or replace once deployed. For example, if you think about medical implants, uh, you wouldn't want to cut the patient every time that when you need to change the battery. So for this reason, you need an algorithm that consumes less energy. It should also be noted that power consumption depends on many factors other than the algorithm used, such as the threshold voltage, the clock frequency, and the technology used for implementation. So it is hard to compare even algorithms when you are using different technology. But let's move on to latency. Latency is especially relevant for certain real-time applications, especially in the Internet of Things. For example, automotive applications where very fast response times for components such as steering, airbags, or brakes are required. Latency can be defined as the measure of time between the initial request of an operator operation and producing the output. For example, the latency of an encryption operation is the time between the initial request for the encryption of a plain text and the reply that returns the corresponding ciphertext. So this is actually important because in the next slide we are going to talk about throughput and we can see throughput maybe in terms of uh, megabytes that you are going to encrypt per second. But especially in the Internet of Things, uh, the network that you are going to use maybe is not going to transmit huge amount of data, but they are going to, uh, for example, the sensors would submit a small amount of data but very frequently. So latency becomes important at this point because, for example, the key schedule algorithm or similar operations that makes the encryption algorithm ready takes too much time, then the latency will be huge. So at that point, throughput may not be important because you may be interested in the latency. Throughput is the rate at which new outputs, for example, authentication tags or cipher tags are produced. Unlike conventional algorithms, high throughput may not be a design goal in lightweight designs. However, moderate throughput is still required in most applications. So yes, we may not be required uh, gigabytes of ciphertext per second, but some ultra lightweight devices are really constrained, uh, uh, have various uh, limited CPUs, let's say. so. Uh, 
even kilobytes per second may not be achievable for some devices. So the algorithm should uh, address these uh, problems. Let's focus on hardware specific metrics. Resource requirements for hardware platforms are typically described in terms of gate area. The area of an implementation depends on the technology and the standard cell library and it's measured in nanometer squares. Area can be stated in terms of logic blocks for field programmable gate arrays or by gate equivalents for ASIC implementations. Again, it is important to remind that the number of gate equivalents that you are going to calculate or measure depends on the technology you are going to use, but not only to the algorithm itself. On FPGAs, a logic block is the basic reconfigurable unit that contains a number of lookup tables, flip-flops, and multiplexes. Logic blocks are implemented differently on different FPGAs. The number of lots, flip-flops, and multiplexers depends on the FPGA family. The number of input and output bits of the LUTs also depends on the FPGA family. So in order to compare algorithms in the computation, you need to use the same FPGA and same technology so that the, these numbers make sense. For ASICs, one gate equivalent is equivalent to the area that is required by the two input NAND gate. The area in gate equivalence is obtained by dividing the area in nanometer square by the area of the NAND gate. The number of gate equivalents of a hardware implementation is therefore very specific to a particular technology so that it is not possible to directly compare the number of gate equivalents of implementations across different technologies. A low-cost RFID tag may have a total gate count of 1,000 to 10,000 gates, out of which only 200 to 2,000 may be used for security purposes. So actually, it doesn't matter how many gates the device actually has because you have like 20% of that to be used in security purposes. Area requirements and power consumption can be correlated, in which case minimizing area also tends to reduce the power consumption. This is actually valid for even the high-end devices like CPUs and GPUs. For software applications, let's move on to software specific metrics. For software applications, resource requirements can be measured by the number of registers as well as the number of bytes of RAM and ROM that are required. Functions that use a small number of registers have a lower calling overhead as fewer variables must be placed on the stack before the registers can be overwritten. ROM is used to store the program code and can include fixed data such as S boxes or hard coded round keys while RAM is used to store intermediate values that can be used in computations. This can lead to additional trade-offs between calculating values on the fly versus looking up, well, looking up values in a table. So as you can see, uh, uh, it is very hard to do a lot of things in this uh, standardization process because it is hard to compare uh, hardware and software implementations, but this is why we are having the workshops and uh, there are a lot of benchmark uh, where crypto community uh, trying to optimize the software and hardware implementations of these candidates. 